Thank you for choosing to listen to this message. At Coastal, we believe in changing and enriching lives through the power of the Word. We pray that this sermon would be a blessing to you. That's what Church of the Nations looks like. It's different people, different ages, different types, in different nations. And the wonderful thing is, and I've already had photographs early this morning from different of the family around the world as they've been praying in different parts. We, we kind of almost like the tail end Charlie's here because um, they, they've been praying from the Polynesian and Micronesian islands while we were still sleeping this morning. And we started yesterday morning, we walked exhausted, those young ones of us that were out there and the lazy ones like me that were sitting on my patio. Okay, okay. But seriously, from early this morning, they've been praying from the other side of the earth. And um, as I said, from the southern part of Africa, I've already heard this morning, and from England, and, uh, and it's kind of come across. And they were play, praying in New Zealand, and I know in Sri Lanka, and it's come the whole way across. And what a privilege it is that we, we pick up over here. Now, um, for my joy... Um, the the other thing that, that transpires is that, as Rod has already said, that um, as part of, of the, one of the members of the Apostolic Council, um, it's my designation to look after the prayer day around the world. The other wonderful thing is that I work with the Cotton Media team who put out all this wonderful stuff. So this has been going on for several months for me, and today is a culmination of that. And what a privilege that God says he will hear from heaven if we humble ourselves and pray. It's a joy. Now, the wonderful thing, too, is that if we look in Amos um, and chapter 9, it says over here, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman will overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows seed. When the mountains will drip with sweet wine and the hills will be dissolved, behold, the day is coming. And the theme that we have this year within Church of the Nations, and I'm sure um, different of us have preached on it, and I'm sure as has Rod and Val, um, we believe that God is supernaturally beginning to overtake us, where the, the plowman will overtake the reaper. And so within that, as we have focused with that, Toward our prayer day today, the theme for the prayer is acceleration. And we're going to be praying into different aspects of that. And I trust you're expectant in your spirit. The Lord loves the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous. He doesn't like sloppy prayers or people that are doing him a favor or, you know, just uh, repetitive. God loves the urgency of our hearts as we pray. And so this morning as we pray, we're going to have fun as we go through these things um, probably fairly quickly. Um, but we want to focus on the Lord, and we want to give him honor this morning as we do that. And um, the key scripture, if you had that up, if you're, you're way ahead of me. Um, there we are. I'm still on this scripture. He, he's going home already. Um, okay. Oh, I must look up there. Sorry I, don't, sorry, I don't need to turn around. This is a, par- this is a posh church. It's, it's got posh things. It's new and it's air conditioned up here. And it's very wonderful. But the whole idea is that we're supposed to pray. Okay. Um, so that key scripture which I've just had uh, was that. And here are some of the prayer points. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pray about acceleration. Now, before we do that, what I'd love you to do is just get into groups of about six with people around you, if you don't mind. And when you get into that group, number yourselves from one to six. So if you just find six people around you that look nice, that look spiritual, that can pray well, if you're a visitor here, you will not be a stranger for long. Okay, if you could do that as quickly as possible. Thank you. So, if you could... Shh. Shh. 
Okay, so here we go. If you're in your group, there the points are for acceleration. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pray that God will acceler accelerate His inter intimacy, our intimacy with the Father, that He will accelerate our spiritual growth corporately and individually, that there will be an incredible acceleration of the harvest of souls, that there will be an execution of His Word. Look at this promise from Romans chapter 9, verse 28. The Lord will execute His Word on the earth thoroughly and quickly. He's going to accelerate it. Let's ask God. Let's believe. Pray believing that that will come to pass. Let's ask that He'll accelerate kingdom influence where you are and that He'll accelerate financial blessing both on your household, on the church, on those that you love and those who you know. So go ahead and then when we're ready to move on to the next point, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. So just have fun. Okay, just some people weren't clear what are we supposed to be praying into where all those dots are, just pray into the dots.
Okay. We're going to move on to the next point. And if we could just bring that up on the screen. It's overtaking. So what I'd like to do, the, the word, if, if you go back to that scripture in Amos that we read at the beginning, it says that this will be a time for overtaking. The plowman will overtake. If we overtake, it means a supernatural promise of acceleration to overtake, and we will see things going faster, but it will come from a place of rest. It's not striving. It's us cooperating with the Holy Spirit to see it begin to go faster. And so um, if you look over here, God will suddenly bring things to pass as he did when he set his house in order. 2 Chronicles uh, 29, 36, Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced over what God had prepared for the people because the thing came about suddenly. When we begin to overtake, it begins to come about suddenly. And from that expectancy for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the church, the season of healing to come about uh, as we overtake suddenly, and then within those things that they would not just pass and fizzle, but that we would hold the ground. We, you know, think of yourself overtaking a car on the freeway. If you're going faster than that car, you hold the ground when you've over, overtaken. We, 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 we're going to pray for that. So go ahead.
Right. We're going to move on to the next point. Um, I want to do a little thing. I asked you to number yourselves when you were um, when you were in your groups. So if you were number one or two, one and two, I'd like you to move clockwise to the next group. If you were number one or two, I'd like you to move just quickly and quietly. If you could just, if you were number one or two, move clockwise to the next group. Okay, shh. I know we said about the effective fervent prayer of the Lord. The effective fervent change seems to be noisy in this place. So, <laughs> okay. We're going to move on to freedom. Number three, we're going to pray into freedom. We're going to pray. F- shh, shh, shh. We're going to pray for accelerated freedom in locked-in situations. Jeremiah 1.8 says, Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Amos 9.14 says, I will restore the captivity of my people Israel. He's going to set them free. And in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives. There are situations here in the church that are locked in where people think uh, things may seem impossible to you, may uh, seem impossible for a family member, maybe a relationship, it might be a financial situation, it may be something that's burdened on your heart. Um, we, we're looking for continued breakthroughs uh, with the building fund here and for, uh, for the alteration and, and those kind of things. But if there's emotional, relational situations or financial situations that need unlocking, Just ask God to break them and release them now. So please go ahead.
Okay, we're going to move on to number four. The next section is well-being. Micah 4.3 says, He will judge between many peoples and render decisions for mighty nations, distant nations. Then they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up a sword against nation. God is bringing us to a place where rapidly we will not have to strive, that we will not walk under a burden. We will live in the promises where we see the boundaries fall in pleasant places. Just pray for well-being in these areas that are listed here. Okay, we need to move on. The next, uh, and this is the last uh, aspect that we, we're going to pray corporately into, and that is the new generation. Just listen, please. Um, God, is, God is a transgenerational father. He proclaims blessing to generations. Psalm 103 says this in verse 17, But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. His righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember all his precepts and do them. Isn't that beautiful? It's a wonderful promise from God. And then Psalm 71 says this, Even when I'm old and gray, O God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation and your power to all who are to come. I want to say to you, when you get to my stage of life, I, I live with this prayer. I've given my life to see the power and the glory of God come. I've walked the face of this earth to see it come. And now that I'm old and I'm not so great because all the hair has fallen out. The, the, I, I don't want to leave with a nilly-willy legacy behind me. I want to declare the glory of God and his power to the next generation. Let me tell you something that's very exciting. We were sitting with the Apostolic Council in Durban. We were praying. The Lord said, gather the next generation. Call them, and you will be amazed who will come. So we've put out a call where the young folk, the, the younger, that's why we trans-generation. We're not next generation or old generation or, or youth generation. We trans, God is trans-generation. And so those that are under 40-ish, we're calling them, the fathers are calling them to come to Jeffreys Bay in South Africa next July. And we're trusting to have over a thousand of that emerging generation come so that the fathers can gather to pray over them. It's going to happen for about three or four days. The, the, the young folk are organizing it. It's incredible. Just ask God to speak blessing on that. And then if you just wouldn't mind doing that as, as rapidly, designate one person to pray for pray into that or one or two and then we're going to um then there's just one or two quick things i want to do before we hand over so please go ahead
Right. If you could just focus in here for a moment. Thank you. The first thing I want to do is, I wonder if you wouldn't mind just where you are, even in your groups, if you could just sit down where you are. I'd like all the elders that are here to stand, the elders of the church, if you wouldn't mind standing. No, no. <laughs> no, I'm already... No. Okay. If the elders of the church and their wives could just stand. Okay, so basically, um, is Sandy here? Ben and Sandy? Okay. Okay. All right. So I, I just want to pray a blessing over them. Uh, these are the folk who, um, you know, w when you see that um, that uh, Paul sent Timothy to set the church in order. And uh, I know we're going to be doing different things of that when John, who's uh, the apostolic covering, comes in a few weeks' time. Uh, but I want to just say, we just want to commit these folk. Um, now, I just want to give thanks to them. Can I just pray over you quickly? Father God, we speak life and love and blessing. We thank you, Lord, for those that have chosen to answer the call. We thank you, Lord, that your word declares that those who earnestly desire leadership, it is a good thing. It's not a position. It's not a title. It's a servant heartedness that comes through. And so, Lord, we thank you for the servant hearts in these three couples and, and for Ben and Sandy. And we speak life and love and wholeness on them. We pray for wisdom and protection. We thank you, Father God, that you have set them aside to lead us to be under shepherds to the chief shepherd whose name is Jesus. We protect them now in Jesus' name. Amen. just want to ask Rod if he wouldn't mind just praying a prayer of blessing over the apostolic council uh, as well. Uh, yeah. Dave, if you could just stand here and... If you'd raise, uh, stretch your hands towards Carol and to Dave, uh, they represent a leadership that has just been uh, amazing. Forty years or so, uh, this family have been together, Church of the Nations, and they have uh, walked and and walked the integrity of God out in their, their personal lives as a as leaders, and um, it's it's unique in this day and age where leadership would stay the course, stay the course, stay the course, and so we wanted to continue to pray the wisdom as they continue to, to go into new phases and new, new, new uh, uh, seasons where they're now handing over and passing it on to the next generation, that there'll be wisdom in it and the anointing would continue to flow. It's just a, this is an apostolic flow that goes around the world, which we, we are praying for here now, which carries a lot of weight in, um, a, 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 with, with, with principalities and powers. They don't like this, but we, we thank God for um, the, the, the opportunity to pray and be the errands and hers to lift their arms that the battle may prevail. So, Father, thank you. As Dave and Carol um, represent the apostolic oversight, the apostolic leadership of Church of the Nations, we lift them up to you, my God. We thank you that as Moses uh, ra raised his arms and the battle continued, that there was Aaron and hers, and our prayers are the Aaron and her prayers that would hold the arms of each apostolic leader and uh, as they are continuing to stand and, and announce and declare and to walk into the, to the, 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 the new uh, mandates that they've been called to and the new releases that they've been called to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to set into place the new uh, uh, flow and the dispensation of, of, of growth for the new generation, the next generation, the trans generation. Father, we thank you for the anointing that would help them and the acceleration that is required because... There are multiple millions that need to come to Christ. And so we, 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 we're looking to this acceleration in, 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 your, in your oversight and your, and your anointing and your, and, your, and your guidance and your help and your strength and uh, the tenacity it needs to stand. Having done all, stand. We thank you for that, my God. We thank you and give you praise for this and for the leadership in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the Word tells us that we need to honor those in authority. Um, we, we need to give honor to those in authority. What a wonderful nation. You look at the coin, it still says, in God we trust. And we might not always behave that way. It might not always seem that way. I want to tell you, I come from a nation that many were deprived of a lot of things for a long time. I'm very proud to be part of, proud in a good way, to be part of this tiny nation. 
And so, Heavenly Father, your word declares that we to pray for the government. We thank you for the government of this land. We thank you for the system. We thank you for the constitution. We thank you for the founding fathers. We thank you for those with integrity that are walk in the custodianship of what you have ordained in this nation. We ask your word to be protected in this nation. We ask your word to go forth like an arrow in this nation. We speak life and love and blessing on, on, the, uh, on the House uh, of Representatives. We, we pray on the Congress for the, uh, and the Senate. We pray for the President. We pray for the administration. We ask for wisdom as they lead us and protect them in Jesus' name. Amen. One last thing, which is just going to be indulgent for me, if you don't mind. Could I just ask Jerry to come and John, if you wouldn't just come and join me up front here. Jerry and John. Yeah. John, uh, John at the, the, the newly married at the back. Why don't you just stand with me here, guys? Um, and you guys are not allowed to do this, but I need two chairs here. There we are. No, you're not allowed to. You've got to just... Um, when I share about the celebration of servanthood, I always say two things. A servant serves when no one else is watching. And there are two people who serve in this body very faithfully. There are many who serve very hard and give of their time, and I, I am so grateful for that. Um, but these two men, when we're all sleeping on a Sunday morning or getting out of bed, he's out getting food that he brings forth for the needy and to bless us as well and to serve those who need here. John goes and gets it faithfully every Sunday morning. And there's actually two others, three others that are. There are three others that do it. Okay. Uh, if they would come, just. <laughs> you didn't tell me that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you asked if I picked it up today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on. Let's give the, give the Lord a hand. For you. And then very often, Jerry goes and distributes on his way home. He's like the Pied Piper when he stops off at this little place uh, beyond Bernal. And, uh, and I just want to give, you, give the Lord thanks for these people today. I just want to do something. Um, so I'm going to indulge a little. I'm not going to do it for everyone because it will take too much time. But I want uh, John to sit down here with his feet in the bowl. I'd like you guys to gather around and put your hands, connect to him if you would. Um, thank you. And, uh, and Jerry, if you wouldn't mind just sitting down here. Jesus said, if we want to be great in the kingdom, we need to serve. And what a wonderful testimony that these guys serve when no one else is watching. And not only with collecting the food, sorting out graphics, sorting out uh, sound and, and videos and all kinds of, of things as well. And, uh, and we just we're so privileged to have people who serve like this. And I know there are many others of you who serve. And I, I want to say I'm grateful. But this is just a gratitude to God and to honor them before God as well. So thank you. Just want to say as well, I walked through the Palestinian areas with John. He carried my water tanks day in and day out, day in and day out. And we went through every kind of situation, and John was faithful. Even when others that should have been doing the work conked in, he was faithful. So I'm particularly grateful. He, he even moaned that I walked too fast. Yeah. And I said, hold on, John, you're about a third of my age. He said, yes, but you've had lots of practice. <laughs> Put your hands on John's shoulder. So, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you first gave us the example. And, Lord, right now we just speak life and love and blessing on, on these young men. Thank you, Lord, that they are doing what they saw the chief servant do. And so, Lord, even as the water of this bowl washes John's feet, we pray for a refreshing to come on his and each of these young guys' souls, body and spirit. We pray for a fresh zeal to rise up, Father God, that Lord is that your word would seal deeply in their hearts. 
and that they'd run and not grow weary. And we speak life and love and blessing over these feet, over all of their feet. How lovely on the mountains of the feet of them who bring good news. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just give me a little bit at a time. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Life and love. Leadership feet. Feet that would run the race. Father God, we thank you for Jerry. We just thank you for a faithful man. A man who never claims anything for himself, but Lord, just faithfully gets on with it. We thank you, Lord, for a man with no pretense. Lord, when you saw Nathaniel Nathaniel, Nathaniel came toward you and you said, I see a man with no guile. And Lord, we see a man with no guile. We give you thanks for Jerry. Thank you for his faithfulness in the house. Thank you for his faithfulness as a father. And so we bless him right now. In Jesus' name. Father God, we pray. Jerry, I just sense that the Lord says to you, this is a new day for you. It's not a day of idling. It's not a day of ticking along. And the Lord says that even these things that have come to frustrate you, I will put them in subjection beneath your feet. I will give you a renewed energy, a renewed zeal, and renewed love, and a new passion for me and my word, says the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for him, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you for his heart, Lord. So, Lord, for all of these young guys and the ones that are not so young, just speak blessing on you, Chris and Mike. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Well, thank you for entering in. We did church different today. But you know what? This is the body of Christ, and this is what it's about. That's why we're part of this church. Um. That's why we're part of this family, because it's a family. So now there's lots of exciting things to share, so I won't take any longer. Thank you, Dave. You get Dave a hand. Thank you for facilitating that for us. Praise the Lord. Um, Just so grateful that uh, I could get back and be a part of that. Um, I just, uh, being part of uh, many trips that Dave went on, I was part of um, he has a ministry where he just sh- shares this, the, the, the servant part of, of the Father and, and has washed, uh, I think, more feet than any stadium in America could hold and sharing the love of Christ. So it's just wonderful to, to see that, that there is an anointing on what he does as washing feet. So hallelujah. We're excited about that. We just wanted to, uh, before closing, just kind of share a bit about, about our trip. Uh, we got back at uh, yeah, 1 o'clock this morning. And so, yeah, <laughs> uh, so we're, we, and I wanted to take opportunity to, Phil that was part of the team, he heads back home, um, and uh, where's home now? You're all over the place, where? Near Jarose, a bo- man born in Michigan, obviously the white, the, the cold snow didn't f- affect your complexion in any way at all, hallelujah, uh, I went there once and it affected me, hallelujah, but um I'm just going to let each each share, and obviously we have a, a time frame that we want to be able to. We're going to be rolling some pictures. Um, that picture up there is is uh, the top the top the top uh, e, east corner is where we went. It's just the closest point to to Cuba. It's uh, it's uh, Mall Saint Nicholas is the town that we went to there, and uh, obviously Port-au-Prince is where we uh, we hubbed out hubbed out and went through to that place. It's a uh, it's like a 12-hour bus ride, so we managed to get MAF to fly us there. So I was really grateful for the one-hour flight. Hallelujah. Uh, sorry. Uh, Missions Aviations Fellowship. Uh, 
So it's wonderful to have pilots that will pray with you, and pray before you fly and after you've flown, especially over there. Not, not sure how maintenance is and those on those and those things. So, but it, it was wonderful. Um, before we kind of, as you guys get yourself ready, I'm just going to have Phil, uh, um, Jedediah start, and then Phil. Um, we're going to have Randall. Where are you, Randall? Don't run away. <laughs> And then Phil and myself will just quickly uh, culminate it. So we just we're gonna just let some photos roll while we share. And uh, but I just want to before we do, Heidi, you're heading to Uganda, or Kenya, Kenya. Could you stand? And then obviously uh, Scott and uh, Karen, Carrie, Carrie is it Carrie? Hey, it's Carrie. Carrie, got Carrie. You guys are going to Ecuador, and so we just want to pray for you, and uh, because uh, I obviously have a an opportunity to minister and go there. And so Heidi and, uh, and her husband, Scott, are busy building a hospital in Kenya. So they go over periodically, so they're going to be going for a month. So we just want to thank God for, uh, I, I really have it on my heart, having just come from, from a, a, a nation that needs, uh, needs a lot of God. So they're going to a nation that needs a lot of God. So, Father, we thank you for Heidi, Scott, and uh, Carrie. Father, we thank you that... Uh, as they go to, to Kenya and as they go to Ecuador, I thank you, Father, that you would watch over them, that you'd uh, just uh, order their, their, their steps. We thank you for your angels encamping about them. I thank you that they'll accomplish what they've been called to accomplish. I thank you for uh, uh, I, I speak in the acceleration that we've been praying about in these situations. They need acceleration, my God, as they go into We thank you that it, it's something that doesn't happen in the third world is acceleration. But we do declare acceleration here in Jesus' name, and we give you thanks for that. Amen and amen. Amen. Just one of one moment is that I was just reminded that it is 9-11 this, this Tuesday. And I just want to be able to just say thank you, Father, that you have brought us as a nation to a place where we're stronger together. Father, there's many that's going to be reminded of loved ones that have been lost at, uh, in, in, in that, that, that tragedy. And so, Father, we bring them before you, and Father, we thank you that you put your loving arms around them, and just uh, and just so anesthetize the the loss and the pain and the agony, and just allow them to cherish and remember the good memories they have about their loved ones. I really thank you that you would uh, just soak them with your 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 presence, which only you can do. So, Father, we thank you that as we come to that day, that we would be mindful of the loved ones that have been lost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Jedediah, thank you so much. He's uh, the man that's uh, a bit that uh, Jedediah and, and, and Phil have been going to Mall St. Nicholas for six years, six consecutive years, and have, uh, as I saw them in the town, amazing how they all know them and say hello and greet them. And the ones that were nine and 10 and now 16, and they're all turning into t- teenagers and and you're seeing the kingdom come to their lives. And I just want to honor them for their faithfulness and that. And we've just connected with Pastor Whistler, um, a new pastor in the area. And uh, so we'll talk about him. And we just managed to just uh, just uh, really connect in a new way. And it was a great time together. So I'm just going to – I'll fill in the gaps, whatever they, they don't remember at the end. So hallelujah. Thank you, Jedi. Um First off, I just really want to thank you guys as a congregation and – pastor especially um we as we talked about acceleration phil and i have been through a lot there we found a new connection to really spread the word how we felt to spread the word and um getting connected here with coastal the acceleration in one year was tremendous we put a tent down there that we got to spend last sunday i think about seven hours of church and uh (laughs) And not in this AC. I mean, I think Pastor was already soaked, and the interpreter was looked like he came out of a pool. And um, but uh, it has been a great blessing to be a part of that. If you're new, you are in a great family, a great home, and you've got amazing leadership. And I just want to thank you for that, Pastor. Um, and apparently, the walk must come from you and David going around because. He, I, a golfer walk is a fast walk, and Pastor puts a whole new meaning on a golfer walk. <laughs> but um, as we got planned to go, we could just see the Lord truly over it. Before we even left the States, a young lady at Cracker Barrel came to know Jesus before we even 
plan it out. And um, from there, I just knew it was, it always has felt blessed, but this was just going to be another great year. Um, and of course, when you go to Haiti, you plan to change your plan. Um, we, uh, as right as we touched down, I got a phone call that the airplane was out of commission and that we would need to go on a smaller one and make two trips. So you instantly right there are readjusting. Um, and as we got traveling through Port-au-Prince, I just was like, great, Pastor, I remember his stories in 95, and here we go. <laughs> but uh, you travel through, and it just looks like it's getting worse and worse, and then all of a sudden just uh, behind some walls, just a beacon of light for us to rest our heads before we got traveling up to the mole. And um, as you see some of these pictures, it was a pleasure to see Randall kind of break out of a shell. Um, I'm going to let him share his Randall saw story with you. <laughs> um, and then Phil, just the way he just, I always learn more and more with Phil. I've been going six years and just the abundant love that he wants to give. You have to make sure he keeps his clothes on you himself so he doesn't come back naked because he will just pass them out. It's just, it's, if he sees a need, he is giving it away. And, um, as you see the kids eating there, you guys played a major role in that. We were able to feed about 100 kids each day for Monday through Thursday. Um, there was enough food to feed about 10 that were hanging around the fence, and they learned to stick there about lunchtime because they knew they'd be getting a plate or two. And the church service, they planned to feed 200 ended up feeding 250, and there still was about 50 that were in the streets that did not get some food. But um, they were still just thankful and blessed to just be a part of it and come and withhold what the Lord had to offer for them. Um, they're also just, it was it was packed. I mean, I as I stand up here, there's so many points I could touch on. And um, there was, like they said, I, as we talked before with, a lot that you're touching on with your na nation of prayer today, um, generational. Uh, it is big. Pastor has taught me a lot about how he sees generational and sees past my kids to their kids. And um, it is, it's true because as Phil and I started in 2012, we had a group of four girls that were nine and 10, and we were able to bless one of them through your help um, and education for this year. She was not going to have an education, and the family just couldn't afford it. Um, you guys picked up a bunch of backpacks, and it seemed so simple, but having a backpack to those 80 kids, their parents were coming by Pastor Whistler's house and thanking him because they did not know how to get their child to school without they, – they just couldn't get a backpack for them. And then, lo and behold, they all came home with them. Um, as we stood there, that was after we walked past Sir Whistler's land on the right, and um, he's been blessed with an amazing amount of land up there, and we plan to accelerate even further and to build more to accommodate for those 300. Um, last year when I went, they were in a building, and they filled out the top floor. We sent a tent, and they filled out the tent, and um, so now we just keep moving bigger and bigger. And uh, Also... Uh, trying to think because like I said there was a lot lot in there packed um one neat experience was going to see the fishing villages it was a learning experience at the same time there's definitely culturally there's things to always continue to learn but just stepping out into an area that they water I mean the simple water they're walking it in from a town that's about five mile walk or so and um, on their head and then if it rains they get a little bit through the system that they have set up but other than that they're bathing their children in the salt water and um, it's just it's surreal to see you know the needs and the needs you will never meet even as you go you just want to keep meeting more and more but you just kind of keep chipping away and you pray that someone else even within the community will meet that need that you were unable to meet um, there was a brother Brunel got uh, listed in as deacon and um, you know just as it's there he was getting kicked out of his house and his house that he's building wasn't ready to be built and um, 
we were able to bless him with the finances so that he could finish his floor and kind of finish the two rooms because he has one week left with where the owner had told him to move on from. So just again, thank you so much. Um, I look forward to seeing how it grew from two to four to what it's going to grow to next year. And as we go as bigger and bigger teams, we're going to be able to outreach and do a lot more than we were even able to think of. So thank you very much. I'm going to put you on, Randall. <laughs> oh, and I did forget one thing. They do not do the R's. So this is Brother Wandel, and that is Pastor Wad. <laughs> So the Wandel sauce. Louisiana hot sauce here, I drench almost everything in it. I drown it just for the flavor. The first meal we had there was rice and beans. I did that, and I was on fire. I was nowhere near the same. And uh, shortly after that, I realized to respect Louisiana hot sauce in Haiti. Um, the first Monday we were there after VBS, I was hit like a train with a sickness. That I have no idea what it was. And I was given probably four or five different medications, South African, Haitian, American. Within two hours, I was up rearing to go feeling like I could pick up a car. So, <laughs> but the people there are so caring and loving that. When I did fall sick, I, there were several people that came to my room, and uh, they just loved on me, prayed for me, and it was just an amazing adventure. That photo of me on the tablet, they had a, a air hockey game on there, and they were having tournaments. And it was just interesting to see that even their technology, even as little as it is, it still kind of overwhelms the young but they still they have their own game. I don't even want to talk about that story, but yes, I do. I've <laughs> so my about seven pounds of my bag went to a coil that goes into a car. It's a Jeep starter coil, and uh, they didn't have the parts there for me to fix the Jeep or their generator, so I brought the broken parts here, and I'll take them back next year to fix them. <laughs> Randall, never flown before, never left the country before, so he's been in a light aircraft, a cargo plane, and then he really was impressed when the commercial jet took him at 40,000 feet at 500 and something miles an hour back. He was super impressed with that. So he had, uh, yeah, so he was the mechanic fixing everything. Brother Phil, come on up. This guy, I've got, you know, I've got to put a leash on him because he preaches. And uh, a love for children, none other than Phil. And Phil, it's been a real honor to be able to just, just walk with you through this journey. Hallelujah. It's been a real honor to uh, walk with him. And first of all, I'd like to say I love all my brothers and sisters out there. Mont Blanc, Mont Mizami, uh, my white friend. So, <laughs> But really, it's, it's family. And so... God is amazing. Uh, the things that happened uh, there and then what happened right here. Uh, fathers impart wisdom. Uh, God spoke to me while I was there, and I interrupted the service and uh, told the men that, you know, you got to impart wisdom to the kids. You, you have to start uh, getting in your place and do what's necessary to help this next generation because the men in Haiti aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, so I'm, it's amazing what God does. He speaks to me there and reminds me when I come all the way back over here, the same message. Uh, and I think everybody here can walk around with a little smile on their face. I told the people in Haiti, uh, I'm empowered by uh, acting like John. You know, John liked to stay close to Jesus' bosom, and he would always say, I'm John, the one Jesus loves. Like, he doesn't love the rest of the disciples. And so I would like everybody here to practice that. It's just really something to know as far as you go out in space, you can't see 
flag the beach if you go out far enough, but God knows all the hairs on your head. And uh, to know that the creator of the universe actually knows all the hairs on your head and loves you that much. Uh, you should, like I told the teenagers that got baptized over there, you should walk around with a little silly smile on your face, knowing that God loves you that much. Uh, the children of, uh, of Haiti are beautiful. Uh, they remind me of uh, the Wizard of Oz. They're, they're just little chocolate munchkins. <laughs> they, 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 all, they sing loud. They make a loud noise. They have a lot of energy. But they act pretty much like the kids over here, the young ones. Uh, but more so like when I was a kid. They're a little more reverent for adults uh, because the teenagers that we used to help with VBS We'll straighten them out real quick. There's a couple of them that didn't take any mess on those little rambunctious boys and got them straight right away. But uh, I tell you, uh, I, I just like to say that what you did uh, giving was a true blessing. And then uh, in addition to that, uh, I don't know if they knew, but I caught the cooks who slave over the kitchen for all those hundreds of people. I caught a couple cooks. Uh, Madam Whistler, the pastor's wife, his son, his daughter, and I had opportunity to sneak in the back and wash all their feet. And then I got back here, and some more feet are getting washed. So, you know, God doesn't care whether you wash black feet or white feet, as long as you wash feet in Jesus' name. And finally, um, you know, the, 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 the Lord is speaking to all of us. You talk about accelerating the growth of this church. It's amazing. Uh, I get impatient. I have to pray for patience because I want to fix everything in Haiti now. But it's overwhelming to us as individuals, just like it may have been overwhelming to Moses to have to take the people out of Egypt. So what I'm going to encourage you is to remember who your father is. The adversary wants to trick you into think it's overwhelming. And I tried to explain to, I tried to explain to the teenagers, it's not like Hollywood. pretty big, pretty monstrous, big horns, and I put a little rock in my hand. It was smaller than that. And I said, now, see, nothing greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That's the straight from our father, right? So actually, we, everybody in here is greater than Satan. So I took a rock, and I said, see, you think And Satan, he's not like that. He's not even that big a guy. I put a piece of sand on that they couldn't see. That's the kind of power he has given you. And he doesn't want, and Satan doesn't want you to know that you have it. And all you have to do is speak his word, what he said, and everything will be accelerated. I expect this church to continue to grow, just like the one in Haiti. Because... I felt the love when I first came in here. I couldn't even get my coffee because nobody was loving us. <laughs> so thank you all very much for what you did. Uh, and finally, you know, the, the, the biggest blessing was, you know, J.D. and I are committed. We're going to go forever. We, we, we had a name that they called us at the other church. I'm black man and he's Robin. <laughs> but we don't know if we're going to call it that because – Everybody's not like the like my brothers and sisters here. They might get a little upset about some, something that might be racial. It's not racial, and uh, and I had to explain to my one older sister. There's really only two races of people: those who follow Jesus and those who don't. Oh, oh, he told me to tell you what FBI is. That's fat, black, and important. <laughs> and finally, finally, you guys. Uh, don't take, don't take for granted who you have here. I'm, I, I'm old. I'm older than I look. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm four and four years and some months from seven. But I, 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 I asked God to do for me what He did for Caleb. When Caleb was 80, He said He felt better at 40. So I said, Okay, Dad, you gave him that unmerited favor. Moi, too. So you guys don't take it, don't take for granted what you have here. I was blessed the whole time being with my my brother in Christ here, and uh, 
He's a, he's a mighty man of God. So just follow his lead and run and run without fear. Run with faith. Hallelujah. We truly experienced the, 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 the loaves and fishes in this whole, whole journey. Um, yeah, so as we are arrived in Port-au-Prince next morning, we're heading off to, 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 um, to the mall. And, um, and uh, the pastor said, uh, I hope Jedediah, you told the pastor that he's ministering tonight at, the, at their revival and uh, that, that he understands what the theme is. And so I said, uh, Jedediah, it would be lovely for you to let me know what the theme is because it is now the morning of the morning before I preach. So he says, oh, no, we've got to minister on Philippians 4.6. Um, so I'm thinking, oh, really? So, so guess what I was, instead of enjoying the nice light aircraft flight there, I was trying to prepare a message because they don't have five-minute services there. They have long services, and I'm going to have to get up there, and uh, Jedediah's got to get up and do a long prayer. I've got to do a long preach. So the fortunate thing is you've got an interpreter, so you double your time. So it's quite nice to be able to do that. So we arrived at that, and then there was 10 kids water baptized. There was a deacon being prayed in. There was um, the, the anniversary where we had, I don't know, well over 300 people. We fed um, well over 550 mouths in, in four days. Um, that's all finances that we, we were able to supply for them to do that. We provided the pastor with, with finances. Um, everywhere, we just emptied our pockets. We emptied everything. We went with 722 pounds of cargo, and we came back with less than 100 pounds in total with all of us. And we just gave everything away. Literally, I mean, we had to stop. Um, as we said, Phil, otherwise you would have given everything, including your clothes, away. So, you know, so we, everything, right to even Randall's favorite cap, uh, the little kid wangled out of him as we were walking out of the, of the house. Um, and we get laptops. We introduced the live school. Um, so we, we managed to pay for a boat to go to these fishing villages where literally there is nothing there. And uh, the clothes that uh, the guys supplied two years back were stored on, the, on these little kids' bodies. And we came and bought more clothes to them. And next time we want to, we to bring bags of rice. We want a medical team in there. We want a building team in there. The nice thing is that it's all contained. It's not in a big city. You can actually see the results and hear the results as um, um, we, we get together. And I'll tell you what, Pastor Whistler and I clicked. His heart to love people and my heart to love people was the same. And he, every, at night, we would have to go from house to house in the pitch dark, pitch dark with our flashlights. Brother, I need you to pray for this, this lady. Brother, we need you to pray for this. Ex-mayors. And we just went from house to house praying. At night, it just it was just a, an amazing time, and um, I'm going to think I'm going to need the next two weeks just to recover, for, because uh, I don't know if I'm up or down because uh, it was just it was just uh, so wonderful. And then to see well over 80 kids in those BBS just be touched, and we uh, filled their backpacks up with stuff and and little uh, little matchbox toys and little dolls for the girls, and it was just a delight to see. And it's all what you guys did. It's amazing what you guys did, and amazing how much we were able just to, to, to provide. Um, and, and the pastor came and he said, the, the, the family said, do you understand what you've done economically for us as a town? And so it was just, just the four of us representing um, all of you there. And it was just a great blessing to be able to see all that. So there was much that took place, and I just want to just wrap it up and just say thank you, thank you, thank you. They celebrated. He literally launched the church when Jedediah and Phil were with them last year. So they celebrated their first anniversary. And, uh, and so he just ran a Bible study before then. And, but he is an ex-mayor of the town. So he has incredible influence there, Pastor Whistler. So that was just a, a joy to be able to, to, to be a part of. And so I just want to say thank you. Uh, we were going to keep rolling other pictures. There's just so much. And, uh, and it was such a short time. And we were sending them whenever we got a signal, sent some pictures through. And Val, thank you, coordinated and put them in the PowerPoint so we could kind of give you a visual. That we were there. I had to borrow the interpreter, the guy next to me, the interpreter, Maxi. I had to borrow his tie so I looked formal enough because they dress up very fancy there. And that tent is, was a real blessing. I mean, we packed in, I don't know, 250 into that tent. I tell you what, you only can do it in Haiti. Only can do it in Haiti. Um, I, I want to just say this, though. When I went with Dave in 94, Dave and, uh, and we went in there, and it was the most horrific place I had ever been to in my life. We did the bus trip from Port-au-Prince up to Cap Haitian. That was the most craziest travel I've ever been on. 
it is the it is the wildest ride. I and I and I dread it because I had to know. I, I knew I had to do this trip back again from Cap Haitian back down to Port au Prince to fly out, and it was. Um, but I and I stepped on there and I was waiting for that incredible uh, spiritual oppression, and there's not. The kingdom of God has arrived in Haiti, and the and the at atmosphere is changing. The atmosphere has changed, and I just want to say that it was encouraging to see the atmosphere open, and there is opportunity for the kingdom of God to advance. And so, um, and 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 I spoke to a Haitian at the airport on the way, and he said, "I am so frustrated because I'm an American, born from a Haitian family here." And he says, "I'm trying to see them change." He says, "And we can't work with the adults; we have to work with the children because that's the only way it's going to change the nation." And that's our heart. So we're going to be doing that. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, for all that you guys did, releasing us, letting us know, and most of all, the prayers that carried us. We sense the prayers that carried us. The pastor's wife on Friday uh, stepped out of her kitchen and twisted her ankle, and she was in agony. And you just can't pop to the local pharmacy to get any meds or pain meds or anything like that. And she was outside and holding her stick and chatting and being polite to all the guests that keep Coming in the door, that 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 gate just opens and closes all day and all night, and uh, finally got to speak to her right at the end. And as I was getting up and saying good night, I said, "Please, can I just pray for your ankle? Because I'm so saddened that you hurt your ankle just before we were about to leave." So I prayed for her, and she she was white with the pain. And I laid hands on her and I prayed for her, and uh, I went to bed. The next morning, um, uh, we sat down for breakfast, and she walked in. And I'm expecting her. So I said, what happened? She says, as soon as you prayed, I got up and walked. It was fine. It was just wonderful to see God just honor, um, honor her healing. And I was just, it was just wonderful to see that. Um, so much, much happened. Um, I had a preach when I wasn't expecting to preach. Oh, it's incredible, the grace of God in our lives. Um, and I had to uh, help the pastor uh, explain that it was okay for women to minister the gospel. I had to help and teach into that area, and so we had to do that on Friday. So he says, I'm going to ambush my prayer meeting, and I'm going to let you speak, Pastor, because I need another voice to help me, to help these ladies, so that they can start preaching, because they think they're not, they don't qualify to preach because they're women. And I said, well, we're we going to deal with that. If not, I'm going to send Valerie there. She'll deal with that. Hallelujah. So I appreciate you just allowing us just to be family today, being able to pray as Church of the Nations, and also just to hear that we... We got back safely, and we had a great time, and great fruit in the ground that uh, all c uh, comes to, to your reward, and I want to say thank you. Thank you again, Phil. It's been a real joy having uh, being, being, being team with you. Jedediah, uh, he leads this thing. Um, I just supported him, and it was just great. It was great to see Randall total green in the, in the mission field and just take to it like duck to water, and the second day he says, I'd like to live here. He says, I'd like to bring my truck here because it'll feel at home. Because <laughs> the vehicles are a real, real challenge there. But, um, um, but uh, there's a gentleman from from Sedgefield, Vasya, Vasya. He brings greetings from from South Africa. Suddenly, I hear the South African voice in my ear as we were worshiping, and it's just lovely to have you with us. All the way from Sedgefield, that's halfway between uh, Cape Town and uh, uh, Port Elizabeth. But uh, thank you. Good morning. Uh, so I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ and, uh, and from the church in Sedgefield. Uh, Jean Passmore is the, is the pastor there. We're from uh, the Southern Cape. And my, nom my name is Marius van der Merwe. And yeah, we, uh, we're working about 40 minutes away from here in uh, Crescent City. I came for a two-week uh, stint. And uh, I'm coming back with my family uh, in, uh, in about a month's time. We're going to be here for six months. So we are looking forward to, to come and join you guys and, and visit with you, but I, I really just wanted to greet you and thank you for the opportunity. I can. Is it an interpreter? <laughs> okay. Sure, sure, sure. I'll, I'll start in English and then... Uh, do you want to interpret? You're welcome to. <laughs> okay. Okay. So... Uh, should I pray and then you and then you and then you interpret you afterwards? Should I just pray the whole prayer and then you can interpret? Yeah. Yeah, say along. Okay. 
All right, let's pray. Almachtige Vader, Heavenly Father, baie dankie vir die voorrecht wat ons het om hierdie kom te spreek. Thank you for the privilege of coming before you today. Ons prijs die heilige naam. We praise your name. Dankie Jesus Christus. Thank you Jesus Christ. Dat u u lewe vir ons kom gee het. That you gave your life for us. Dat u mens geword het. That you became uh, a man and uh, came in your deity. En dat u u self onderwerp het that you offered up yourself om vir ons sondes te te die prijs vir ons sondes te betaal. That you took on the full price of our sins. Dankie dat u ook weer opgevaar het na die hemel en die dood oorkom het. Thank you Lord that you rose again from the dead. En dat u die Heilige Gees vir ons gegee het. And that you brought the Holy Spirit to us. En dat u Gees ons vul en ons transformeer. And that your spirit transforms and lifts us up. En dat u ons in staat stel om mekaar lief te hê en en in eenheid saam te leef. And Lord that you you bring us to a place where we can live in unity. En dat ons mekaar kan lief hê and that we can love one another as ons, we've already heard this morning. En dat ons ons lewens mekaar kan aflê and that our lives together uh, can be to your glory. En ons dankie daarvoor en ek vra dat u seun op die kerk sal rus. We thank you Lord that your spirit will rest upon this church. En dat u ons sal seun in hierdie week soos ons uitgaan om die woord uit te dra en om, om, om die licht te laat skyn in Jesus naam. And Lord, as we go out, that we would shine your lights uh, as we go into this week. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to let you know, you're part of Church of the Nations, okay? So you're going to have languages and all that's happening. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it uh, uh, encouraging and thank you for your participation. God bless you. Please have fellowship. you still got another 15 minutes before you get allowed to go. No fellowship because church. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.